help. All right, well, uh, hello everybody. I am, um, I am Norman Hallett and actually my uh, main focus is uh, the mental and emotional conditioning of traders, uh, which a lot of traders are uh, fearful of looking inward. And I think that's probably why there are a lot of struggling traders. I also um, am a trader and um, uh, for the first really uh, 10 or 15 years of my career, I uh, ran an option firm, but I was uh, mostly wrote trading plans for uh, professional traders and, and the like. I've written several books on the topic. And um, w one thing that I, um, I am a big fan of, and that's simplicity. And um, I also have to admit that I'm primarily a futures trader, although when I buy uh, anything else, uh, whether it's a stock or, a, um, or an ETF or whatever, I, of course, uh, use my technical skills to decide whether I'm going to get in, it, in uh, something or take profit or take a loss in something. So it's the same technical analysis. Uh, so I'm kind of um, excited to, um, to, to analyze uh, some of these stocks that I probably haven't looked at in months uh, as far as it's the chart is concerned, because my my stock trading is mostly long term, although, uh, of course, uh, when you're a technical trader, you can apply a good system pretty much to anything. So um, there we go. I see a hi there. Hello. Uh, so let's let's get into it. I'm going to uh, just take it step by step with you as you give me uh, the stocks to take a look at. I'm going to show you my main uh, my my main process of deciding whether I get in a stock or out of a stock, and and of course I'll take a, a broad look at what I'm uh, what's in front of me and give you some ideas. I generally use uh, RSI uh, as part of my uh, checks and balances. You'll see that on the bottom of the screen here. This is actually uh, HEMA. Um, HEMA's uh, version of it, and um, I, I may refer to that, uh, but if you haven't heard of uh, HEMA, you should really uh, check her out. She's the RSI queen, really. Um, and um, I use that in, uh, usually to, uh, to look for divergences. Um, again, uh, what I do is, uh, these are very simple analysis, but they're very, very effective. I find that putting too many hoops and uh, hurdles uh, to jump or crawl into uh, muddies the water. And generally, when I uh, when I uh, make an analysis, it's fairly uh, consistent with other more complicated versions. I'm going to show you how how I do it, uh, but I'm going to also um, uh, show you a few other things as we go along. So, um, all right, well. Uh, Mike, do you have any, uh, would you like me to, I have Apple up here, but uh, does anybody want to give me a, a symbol and I will go ahead and um, and throw it up here and see what, uh, see what we get, see what I can come up with here. I, I, wheat futures, well, that's pretty interesting because I didn't think I would be doing any commodities today, but let's, um, let's, I'm, I'm going to do the wheat futures first just to uh, give you just to show you how this is a trade station. I haven't used it in a long time, but it does give me access to stocks, which is why I have it up here. But let's um, let's uh, there's the day chart in uh, that's the 2021 week. That's how long I, it's been since I've traded week on this platform. I, I actually traded it last week, but let me uh, let me just put the proper symbol in here. Uh, let's go here. Let's look at the now one second. WH23, that should do it, man. Okay, there's the day chart in wheat. And um, uh, this is a sell right now. I'll tell you, uh, in my estimation, in a very uh, light way, um, as you see, we've made a high here. Uh, you know, uh, it was this last year? This was in um, May of uh, 21. So you can see it's, it's been a while since we had this big rush. Um, but right here, let's let's look more closely at this. Um, if you, if, let me see if I can find a particular. Um, let, let's look at these these last two last three, not today's action, 
which is here. But let's look at these last two uh, last two candles. This is what I call a loaded gun trigger. And I call it a loaded gun because it, it, it looks like a, 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 the barrel of a gun. And, and here is the, uh, the handle, let's say. Now there's a number of different uh, uh, forms of it, but this is a pretty nice form the, of the loaded gun trigger. Uh, and you're looking here at the eight bar exponential moving average, uh, the white moving average here. It, it's the golden moving average and it's the only, uh, it's, it's probably the most important moving average that, that I utilize. Um, when you have hesitation, this, this trigger that I'm looking at here is composed of a, of a spinner or a doji, in this case a spinner, it's a small bodied handle, followed by a dramatic move through the eight bar exponential moving average. This is a signal to go short, okay? So this is, um, in the short term, I'm seeing uh, a, a short move. The problem here with doing too much on the short side is that you're testing this low here. Uh, and you're about to test this low, which means there's not, there's not a whole lot of distance for profitability. In fact, today's small movement here may be, uh, uh, may be all we're gonna get, who knows? But uh, this particular formation will lead to uh, generally, you see a, a, you see a form of it here, where you see a, a smaller body compared to the bigger through the eight, you see that led to this. You see it up here again. You see a, a small body followed by a, uh, a what I call an, extend, uh, an extension move through the eight bar exponential moving average. And that, it results, that resulted in this big move right here. So I'm always watching for this particular trigger. Now don't go shorting everything you see uh, when you when you see this trigger, it also works on the long side here. Uh, here's another example of a hesitation. And then through the, the hesitation candle here, the, sh the spinner is on one side of the eight bar exponential moving average, which is the white line. And then the extension candle, which is the second part of the trigger, moves dramatically through the eight. So you, you really want it on one side and the an extension crossing through the eight. That's the signal to go, oh, look what happened here. So a nice move. So um, what, I, what I would do here, I'd, I'd, be, I'd be waiting. What I would, uh, the way I would trade this is that I would be waiting to see what happened um, when we, when we uh, with the test of this particular low and, uh, and hoping for a signal really on the long side. So um, anyway, that's, that's kind of what I see there and then not really mu not much to talk about there. Let's a um, uh, little bit clear. I wasn't expecting to do a, um, a looking for a bottom. And yeah, I guess I, I, that's kind of what I'm saying. Uh, let's look at PM, see what we have here. All right, call for Philip Marais. I guess that's showing my age there because that is the Philip Morris commercial. Now, I see, when I say I look at something pretty simply, um, uh, I'm going to use that same, uh, what I just described to you as a trigger and then a movement um, in, in a particular direction. I'm going to show you, I see already here. Let's, let's start here. Look at this. Again, hesitation, small body. I don't care about the wicks. I don't care about um, the movement outside of the body of the, but you have a small handle here with a movement through the eight and, and look at the result, okay? Uh, it doesn't always work. Uh, uh, here's one that actually did work. Uh, there's a specific places you put your stops and so on. I won't get into that because it's part of a whole system and I won't even get into the exiting, but I do wanna, um, I, I did wanna mention that particular trigger. Uh, here's one that did not work out, right? So you have, uh, actually, it would have taken a small loss. But all right, let's take a look at what's going on in the near term here. Um, and, and this, I think, has been true of, 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 of a lot of the um, more traded stocks. Phil Morris has been around forever. But, you know, this is a, a sideways movement. Uh, I, I would be uh, tending toward the short side here. 
for a number of reasons. One is that uh, here is that symbol that I talked about, that trigger that I talked about, a, a very small candle here, followed by a movement here. So you're seeing um, some resistance to the upside. Uh, as long as we stay on the south side of this, can of this uh, moving average, then I've got a pretty good feeling about what may happen. Now, uh, remember that in any trigger, uh, here, look, look at this. Here's, here's a, the trigger that I talked about. Look what it leads to. Here's a failure, right? I mean, here's the trigger on the south side that doesn't work out, but it doesn't, doesn't always work out, but it often leads to the start of a, moment, a really momentous move. Um, what, I'm, what I'm looking at here um, is, uh, you know, if you, you can imagine a flag here, uh, but it's really uh, a sideways movement looking for direction. And uh, we're test, you know, we're, we're challenging all of these tops really. I mean, this, is, this happened a while back, of course, but you can see there's a lot of interest in, in, in selling at these levels. Uh, and it certainly would have resistance here. So, you know, I would be looking at the short side of this. In fact, I may even be short here based on what I'm seeing. Uh, let's move down to, uh, now Hema will probably uh, call me after this if she sees my analysis here and the way I use her stuff. But if you look at this particular red bar, red range here, this, this line and this line here, uh, and then you look at it here, uh, these, are, these are two bands, okay? And, um, we're looking at between the 55 and 65 and the, what is it, 25 and, and 35, 25 and 30, or 20 and 30. So when generally, when you have a market that stalls in this band, um, I, I, you look for movements on the south side. You're looking for, and look what happened here. You, 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 see, you, see, you see the market uh, from the RSA standpoint, uh, playing inside of this 55 to 65 band. And uh, so I when this happens, I look for a trigger on the short side. It's happening here right now, you can see. But you can see what happens here. I mean, this area here is the area um, th that relates to, uh, <laughs> to this time space. And you can see that once we got a nice short trigger here, uh, we had a nice movement down. So I would be I would, and conversely, when you see uh, a market come down here, uh, that that could exhaust a southerly move, and you're, you're seeing that right in here. So the fact that we we spend some time down in here, uh, and I would I would be looking at the price action and be looking for a trigger. Now uh, we had a nice trigger here, and um, had a nice movement here. So. Uh, we have a trigger on the south side, according to this the simple trading plan that I call loaded gun. Um, again, there are it's it's it, this is a simple way to get in. There are a few different things that you need to know to get out, and I can't again. I'm not going to go through that today, other than to say that um, I would be I I would you know it's okay to be short this uh, this stock uh, Philip Morris I believe, and I think. Um, and I think I would be, uh, and you put your, you would put your stop above the formation, or in this case, the fact that you have so many uh, highs being tested in this, I may even choose, uh, depending on your risk tolerance, to put my stop up in this area uh, so you don't get faked out. But I wanted to mention that the further that you get from a trigger, the less impact the trigger has. So um, we're, we're starting to extend a little bit. And um, if I were to go short here, if I were um, looking for a trade, um, I, I, I would be short in a very light way, uh, looking for additional confirmation, a breakdown below this area. Because once you break down this area here, then you'd, you'd, you'd be testing this accumulation and a breakdown here, uh, you'd be going further down. And since uh, my feeling is that the first quarter or two of the market, you'll, you'll see some uh, downward uh, favor. Uh, shorting the stock, I have no issue with that. I have no problem at all with that. Again, in a light way. All right, let's see what we else. With your view for gold next.
uh, I'll, let's, I'll take a look uh, at gold. I love gold. Um, let's take a look at gold. I think I have one right here somewhere. And I think I actually marked up that chart. Well, I, I, I updated the chart for you, a few things. Now, uh, <laughs> let me just, uh, I wanna, I, I wanna look at this particular loaded gun trigger again. Look at this, here it is again. Here's a trigger right here that you want to, that you would be going short. We have rules about where to take profits and so on, but it did have some down movement. Uh, although you'd be very careful because again, you're testing lows here. Here, you'd be looking for a, a higher move. Now, this is a bullish market. Uh, and this is a market that I would not be shorting. Um, my, uh, you know, to, to talk about, let's see, let, let's check, let's check, let's look at the weekly. You asked for three to six months. Um, Let's see if I can get the weekly up here. Um, yeah, I mean, we have, you know, if I, if, if, you know, I don't want to start drawing a whole bunch of lines on the chart. You can do that yourself. But looking at this high and this high, uh, you know, you challenge this high over here. So this is a very important move here. I, I would say at this level right here at the, uh, 1910 level, some, somewhere in that level, 1915, 1910, 1915, right in this area, um, 1920, you, you're going to have some resistance. Uh, today's action looked, um, uh, or this week's action is, is um, giving us something that looks a little bit like a, uh, a shooting star, which is not favorable from a weekly standpoint. But again, I would imagine that that may result in maybe a couple of sideways bars as opposed to um, as some sort of uh, retraction in gold. Look, I mean, we're all we're all about all we're talking about now is um, all we're talking about now is uh, is inflation. And when you when you talk about inflation, um, whoops, sorry, let's try that again. Let's see if I can get that here. Okay, let's try. Okay. Ah, there you go. Um, when you talk about inflation, you're talking about generally higher gold and silver prices. Now, one interesting thing is that, uh, listen, we've been talking about uh, this for, for months and, and even a year, and yet gold just really started to move recently. And that's true of what happens with gold. It usually has a little bit of a lag. But look at this. You've got the double bottom. You've got a movement higher. What do I think about the next three to six months? I would be looking to trade from the long side. Now I am getting a little bit of, uh, you know, if you can see from a, an RSI area, we are, uh, we are hesitating in this area. We, we often see right here, we saw a turnaround right here. He was a trigger to do that, uh, to get short. Uh, but you know, when, you, when you play around in this band, the 55, 65 band, um, even though the price may go up, there is a divergence happening. You can see it here, a particular downward move in momentum and an upward move in price. This is, uh, you know, this probably um, will portend, uh, predate a, uh, uh, at least a sideways kind of a movement. Uh, although, uh, you know, th this could continue on for a while in this particular way. But, you know, we're, we're challenging some highs here. Um, you know, the 1900 area for gold is a very important area, as we mentioned, and even the 19, whatever I said before, 1940, that whole area right underneath uh, $2,000 is going to have some resistance. So uh, if you're not long already, uh, I would think if, from a day trader, I continue to trade from the long side uh, until further notice. But as a, um, if I wasn't here, I would be waiting for at least a little bit more side action or a little, maybe a pullback to the 1800 level before I would, uh, I would get long uh, in, a, in a long term way. But I, I just don't see anybody um, getting hurt much on the long side if they have a three to a six month uh, outlook. So um nothing much more to say about that um let's check out the uh, viewing gold looking for bottoming formation to buy again in wheat sbux i'm, I'm hoping that's a stock signal here 
let's uh, go back to the stocks. Uh, this particular trade station uh, is um, a little weird as far as their feed is concerned. SBUX. Uh, Starbucks. All right. Um, let me just take a gander. Uh, very... Well, you know, whenever I see this kind of a cupping, kind of a, um, you know, uh, they used to call this kind of a handle in a cup. It's very, very bullish. It can be very bullish. You can see where, where it seems to be going here. Um, you know, you got to be, you, you know, we have to get through this area. I mean, there's no magic here. Uh, you can see where we stopped here. We stopped our trading here all in this uh, 180 what was it, 104, 105 area here. Uh, so until we break through there on a closing basis, uh, I don't think I would go for it uh, any other than a larger, uh, any kind of a large position. Um, you know, your stop would have to be down in this area. So you'd be risking something on the order of uh, seven or eight dollars a share. Uh, but certainly uh, when you see this kind of a cupping like this, and well, we, we already have our gap here. I guess that was Monday's trading. Oh, I'm sorry, Tuesday's trading. And then, of course, uh, a little consolidation today. Um, but, uh, you know, you've got to be, I, I would be bullish Starbucks. I mean, there's, uh, you're seeing a nice run here. You're seeing accumulation where it could have gone either way. It was testing, testing a bunch of these tops. It, um, it, it tends to go higher. I mean, from a, um, you know, people getting back to work, people getting, uh, you know, they're all drinking coffee. Uh, who knows why, but, uh, you know, they say that price is a, um, when you're dealing with price, you're dealing with everything that the market, uh, all the information known about the market, plus uh, prospects for the next six months. It's probably now in modern markets for the next six weeks. Uh, so uh, you would be looking for on the bullish side, It'd certainly be a hold if I owned it. Um, um, but adding here, I wouldn't do it until we get a close above this area, looking for this uh, more recent high in the 120 area. So um, that's what I would say about Starbucks. Let's see what we'll, does anybody else want to give me a symbol and I'd be glad to put it up for you. I'll just wait a couple of seconds here and then maybe I'll go to something more. Walmart, okay. Yeah, Walmart, amazing. I want to show you this with Walmart. This is why I look at at this these triggers. Um, if you're interested in uh, in knowing more about loaded gun, I'm showing you some of the entrance uh, rules, but there are there are equally important exit rules to keep you in markets or get you out before markets turn. Uh, it's called loaded gun. If you go to simpletradingplans.com simpletradingplans.com. Uh, you'll see all about uh, what, what the loaded gun simple trading plan is. It's a very simple trading plan, but I think you're seeing its potential to be very effective. Um, I also want to uh, give you the link, uh, thedisciplinedtrader.com, T-H-E, disciplined. I'm going to see uh, see your skill at spelling uh, the disciplined past trade past tense the disciplined trader.com so the disciplined trader.com if you go to that site you'll see near the near uh, the top you'll see a band where you can uh, grab for free my four minute drill for traders where I go through a lot of the areas um, uh, in, in four minutes there's over 200 four minute drill for traders and I deliver them to you one a week, once a week for the next 200 weeks if you if you don't unsubscribe and um, and you'll also get on my list where I will if you opt in for uh, the four minute drill for traders uh, from the disciplinetrader.com you'll see a black band there uh, just put your name and email address in there and you'll start receiving my four minute drills where I really go right between the eyes on the truths about trading some of the fallacies and so on, and some of the things that you should be paying attention to, not only from a technical standpoint, but from a mental and emotional standpoint. Look at this here. Here's that, this is the perfect hesitation, right? The doji followed by a move, a, a nice extended uh, 
movement through the eight bar exponential moving average and look at the result. That's what I'm talking about. And here, here's one that loses. Okay, doesn't always win, but you've got short, you know, you always measure your loss, your loss potential. Okay, and if it fits, you take it because this is about a 60s, it's almost exactly a two thirds, 66.25. Last time I did a two month study on this uh, with these signals, uh, this is on the S&P market, S&P contract. Um, it triggered in the right direction. So, and when it does, look at these possibilities. So don't go using these triggers um, carte blanche. You've got to know how to get out and when not to use them. Okay. Um, so Walmart, um, wow. Now you're seeing some action here, which is in the same area. You see a hesitation here. These things can be important. Um, you see the breakout here. You've come back down. Then now that we're out, we're coming back and we're still in that line of interest. Uh, uh, look at that right between this guy. Very interesting. Um, the I would. Th this is directionless right now. I, I don't have one way or the other. Although I would be looking to for a trigger on the long side, and the reason I would be looking for a trigger on the long side are twofold. There is a small version of that trigger I talked about here. I like to see a stronger extension, but you do have a couple of candles of hesitation, which means the market's not sure what to do, followed by a movement where it, it had a something more defined. Now, this is not really that trigger, but it is uh, over the eight bar exponential moving average. And it, it has given us a couple of days over that. So I kind of kind of favoring the long side. As if, if you if if you remember what I said about the red bars, uh, these green bars are kind of the opposite way. I, I look, I, I'm looking for a place to go uh, to go long in a bullish type market. When the market comes down and stops uh, and stops its moment, holds its momentum in this band between 40 and 50, uh, that and then starts to move higher. Uh, when you see it moving here, see how it see how it spent between 40 and 50 here while the market was accumulating here, led to a nice move higher. Um, this may be the same thing going on here, but you need to you need to see confirmation of a breakout past the band, and of course a breakout in price, uh, depending on how you measure that. Uh, so I would be looking at the long side of Walmart. Um, but I, I would not take action yet until I see the momentum start to go higher. Now, as it goes higher, the momentum will tend to stop when it reaches this level in a bullish move. So bullish moves tend to hesitate on the downside when the momentum reaches this area in the 40, 50 area. And then when the bull move starts in price and continues, it tends to lose its steam uh, in this 80 to 90 area. Now that's a lot higher than you usually would see. In most uh, RSI uh, uh, gurus will talk about over 70 being oversold. Um, Hema has a different view of it, and I find uh, her stuff very reliable and so on. Again, if you have not, um, her name is Hema Reddy, and I'll do an advertisement for her right here. She's absolutely terrific. She's got uh, um, years of experience. She probably doesn't have quite as many as I have, but she. But when when you talk about specialty. Uh, uh, and she's reached the high rankings of, uh, of, of many of, uh, of at least one or two of the big firms out there. I mean, she is she is a uh, she's a force to be reckoned with when it comes to analyzing RSI. So if you want to check out him already and her stuff is very, very uh, inexpensive for, to get the basic stuff from her, which includes what I'm looking at here. OK, so uh, I always look at that and kind of give that uh, give it gives me a sense of what may be hesitating and what may not be. Um, so you can see here where we almost reached this area and the bull move ran out of steam. Uh, but you would see that anyway when it got over 70. But in this particular case, it, Walmart seems to conform, has at least conformed pretty nicely to uh, to this little analysis of waiting for momentum to come into this band and waiting for a breakout. So I've been looking for a breakout on the upside here. I hope that helps you. Uh, the sub panel is RSI indicator parameters 14, is that correct? Well, I think you can read it right here. Yes, it's, uh, it's, it is the 14, okay? Uh, let's see if I, I bought Walmart 
I bought Walmart at 140, 150 call spread. Uh, Walmart two days ago for 45 days out. I think you'll be okay. Let's let me take a look at the 40, 40. Yeah, I mean, you 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 bought, um, you know, you, yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's, I think you're in pretty good shape there. I would not lose, I certainly wouldn't lose any sleep over it. And, um, you know, everything that I've said, um, I, I'm not, in fact, and you can, you now know that I'm not bending my analysis toward making you feel better. I've just given you the analysis before I saw that. So I, th I think you're in pretty good shape there, MK. So um, don't lose any sleep over that. Let's see, JPM. Let's see what we got there. JPM. Is this too, am I, am I being too simple? Should I get more complicated uh, out there? I don't, um, <laughs> if this is too simple for you, uh, I can, believe me, simple is the best, okay? And I really, um, I can get more complicated, I'm capable, but I'd rather not. All right, looks like a JP Morgan. Um, uh, JP Morgan is, um, again, whenever I see these kinds of loops, I'm, you know, you're, you're testing, we're, we're testing again this recent high, which, um, which is um, somehow reminiscent of what happened back here, back in July. But, um, you know, this, this is giving me sideways action here. We're testing a low, we've tested some highs. So we're, we're, we're going sideways here. There's nothing to, uh, to be excited about either way. And again, we're, you know, this is a not not enough playing in this band. But whenever I see, um, even when you're a little bit above, a little bit below, now we're in the center. Uh, you know, again, if I was a betting man, and I'm not. I, I mean, I guess this is all bet. But if I was, if I was a crazy speculator, I'd I'd be looking toward the south side. I'd be looking. I'd be looking for a correction because we've tested this high. There were now testing this high. This is a pretty feeble uh, shooting star here, but you know, feeble is a shooting star is a shooting star. I mean, you don't want to stand in front of it if you don't have to. And you can see a uh, uh, quick failure here on a day. You're, you're starting to see a little failure. We're still over that eight bar, that golden moving average. So uh, there's nothing definite on the short side either. Um, this is a market that could go sideways actually for quite a while. Um, so, um, I, I'm not sure I would be, you know, I would glance, I would draw my, uh, my sideways, I would, I would draw at my, my southerly line here, my northerly line here, look at this like a band. And as, um, um, as the previous, uh, as the previous guru said, you know, up and down, it looks like it's right in the middle of that washing machine. Um, so really nothing to be done here. I mean, this is a pretty comfortable price for JP. I wish I could give you more on that, but I would be looking elsewhere. If I was, if I was long this market, I wouldn't get out. Uh, I don't think that you would normally be short this market. Uh, it's, it's, it, it's really not, it's really not telling us that uh, it, it's more an accumulation of, of, of this nice move here. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty substantial move of 30, 35%. When you go sideways like this, it's kind of absorbing uh, that move. I would, you know, even though we have the double, the, the, the double test of this particular high here, although this is not a completed test, I would think that um, we're, we're going to eventually go higher, not lower. Uh, but again, there's nothing to do here. I'm just, I'm just guessing and playing around. Let's go to HON and we'll see what's on there. H O N Honeywell. All right. Um, yeah. Well, I'm sorry. That's uh, that's my fault. Uh, Honeywell. Let me just take a gander here. I mean, I'm, I'll kind of think out loud. You're seeing. Um, you're, you're seeing, uh, you know, a nice bottom having, look at that beautiful bottom. Uh, look, at, look at this kind of uh, movement. Uh, that, that's, you can see, the, see this loaded gun signal here where you had the, the, the small body on one side of the eight and then a movement down leading to at least this. 
in our, we would have been out in this area, but you would have gotten most of this. Here's another symbol here where you had a small, and then through the eight. Um, so uh, uh, look at this, this is, a, this is a movement, even though it was a holiday in between. Well, here's not, boom, here's a small symbol, boom. Uh, so we, we have a very normal market here. The, 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 we've tested, we've got the bottom in, um, but this used to be the high. And now this same area is going to be support for where we are right here, uh, where we're, where we're uh, playing in, in the current market. So uh, it's trying to correct and it's doing a pretty good job of it. But uh, if I was long, I would hold in here, this area of uh, 204, uh, this 200 to 204 area right here, this would be the area where I would not want to breach. Um, you know, although we had a lot of accumulation here, I mean, the fact that we broke through uh, this this uh, resistance area, which was very, very strong, means that we likely will have support in this area. So, you know, I would have no problem with, uh, with watching the market uh, get steady here or hold its hold its price in this 200 to 205 area and then nibbling again nibbling on the long side i think this this may have a while to go but again you um, you can't you can't just guess at things you have to uh you have to have uh, some sort of indicator and symbol so i'd be looking at that uh, 200 to 205 area and see what happens to the market in that area my guess is that it will move sideways and then break one way or the other. Wherever it breaks is the direction that I would go. I'm not getting any help here from, uh, from the RSI. Okay, all right, let's look at some more symbols here. Uh, I bought it, uh, it's Walmart, uh, see more in the uh, HSY, HSY, Hershey, all right. Okay, Hershey. Well, um, let's see. Uh, Mike, Mike, are you are you long or short this? Do you do you have? Uh, it's a seasonal trade. Um, well, I hope it's a seasonal short trade. I mean, you, you've exhausted some of the short side. You've got a lot of uh, a lot of interest. A lot of buyers will show up in this area, I expect, over the next couple of days uh, because of, you know, all the all the investment at this price level. But look at this. Again, uh, you can check out um, simpletradingplans.com and read a little bit more about loaded gun. But here's your loaded gun signal. What's really nice about this is that it took out all of the lows here. And I'm not ta again, I'm not talking about wicks took out all the body lows here. Uh, when the Japanese, uh, the, the farmers who put this together, the candlestick uh, analysis, uh, they um, they pretty much ignored the wicks. Uh, and so so I do too. They say that, you know, in the beginning of the day, the first trade and the last trade, these are the most important, where the market starts and where it ends. These are the, uh, the these are the highly valued price areas. So. Um, when you see this kind of a move in a loaded gun, look, look at the follow through here. Here's another loaded gun signal. Look at that. Gave you this nice run. Okay. Here's another loaded gun signal. Gave you this nice run. Here's another loaded gun signal. Gave you this nice run. So you can see that I know from wh where, whence I talk. I just didn't, well, I guess I did make this up. <laughs> but uh, I've been, you know, I uh, again, the, the art of getting out and when to, you know, how long to stay in and so on. It's not just a matter of following uh, on one side. I mean, what do you do here and what do you do here? You stay in or out. There are some rules that we have, again, simple rules to keep you in. This is obviously staying in on the short side. And I would continue to be short, at least for another, um, you know, 10 points or so, uh, lo looking to challenge this area right here. Again, we've got a lot of, we've got some, um, some price action here in, in Hershey that should show some support right in this 215 area. I don't know if you're, I don't know what the seasonal trade is, whether it's a long or short trade, but uh, um, if it's long, it's, it may be, may be tough. You have a simple scans you run in scanners and radar screens looking for crosses. Uh, you know, I'm developing that right now, but you know, no, I don't. And the reason I don't is because 
I'm, I, I'm not, I generally don't use these to stocks except for stocks that I'm interested in. Uh, for instance, right now, um, I am doing a lot of personal study on water. W A T. In fact, um, um, Aqua. Let, let me let's look at Aqua. Um, uh, this is this is a stock that water is going to be the new issue. It, it, it's it's already starting. You're seeing what's happening in the West with water, uh, with the change in the environment and so on. Water is going to be this is the next. This is like the next gold. So I, I'm looking at stocks, and this is one stock that I decided I would start to accumulate. And I've already started to accumulate this stock. So Aqua is um, if you if you remember well, you, you're not going to remember because you weren't around for the gold rush. But they say that it wasn't the gold mine, you know, that everybody was out there digging and everybody went broke, uh, except for a few people that, that were lucky enough to hit gold. The people who made money were the people who sold the shovels and the pitchforks and the wheelbarrows. Those are the people that made money during the gold rush, okay? Aqua has that same positioning in the world of, of, uh, of water. When you're talking about water, you're talking about desalinization, you're talking about um, utilities, um, uh, certain utilities, um, and you're talking about uh, other areas that have to do, of course, with water. But Aqua, uh, they produce the filters and a lot of the maintenance equipment for all of these water operations. So, you know, as uh, as it becomes more and more critical to filter better and to and to uh, and to increase production and so on, it's companies like Aqua. I think that's going to really benefit. Just my own opinion. So um, let's look at Aqua. Um, you can see that um, it um, and and here's uh, you know here was a nice buy signal on on what I ta talked about as far as a uh, loaded gun. Again, if you go to simpletradingplans.com, uh, you'll uh, you'll see a little bit more about uh, loaded gun. But also if you if you just go to thedisciplinetrader.com, thedisciplinetrader.com, and opt into my four minute drill for traders, you'll see the band at the near the top to to get on. You'll be on the list and you'll get all my information on all of this stuff. Okay, and you can opt out at any time. Um, but Aqua looks like you know any. Uh, anything in the 30s, I think, is going to be a good buy. Of course, 32 is a better buy than 39. But um, you, you, you may have a chance here. You know, you can. Um, but I show you this stock not to analyze it, other than to uh, know that it's a utility and will tend to go sideways. Uh, but if you can get this stock anywhere below 36, uh, it looks like we may have a chance in the next month. As the market, uh, you know, has given us uh, some short shorting action, we seem to be having uh, a nice accumulation. Um, there's there's also some rules that I have that when the market moves against the the eight and whether to buy or sell this. In this case, the rules would say to to, to look for selling it. Uh, I would look for a breakdown um, uh, below these these lows of the bodies, and and boom, I would um, if we have a closing low, I would. Uh, I wouldn't get short again. I'd be looking to buy it, but it would, I would be holding my breath until we start to see some accumulation, which you, you're going to likely see in this, in this 35 area, 35, 36 area. So for the long term, you want something long term to hold? I suggest you look at Aqua for because you need, I think you're going to really uh, benefit by starting to invest and educate yourself in the area of, of water. Okay. Uh, so. Uh, well, in fact, you know, we're working on some scans right now, but you'd be surprised. Um, uh, for instance, I don't, I don't take that loaded gun signal when certain things around it are happening, or there's not enough room against a particular established low or high, depending on if I'm going long or short, to warrant a trade. And so, you know, all of these permutations when you're when you're programming, it's amazing how many how many different uh, uh, things you have to you know, put in there and, and then you always miss one. So uh, we're working on it, but it's going to take a while. Simple is all well, is all what we want. Uh, don't need hundreds of indicators. I agree. Um, I'll say, but, so buying must have been uh, what we talked about in the, that uh, seasonal. Again, I would be very, you know, you're going to have a better place to buy if the seasonal hasn't started, it looks like, from that. Uh, will you send a replay, please? I think they're going to have, uh, you'll be able to see some of these replays. Okay, we probably have time for one or two more stocks. I hope 
you haven't been too bored about my an analysis, but I think if you make it too complicated, listen, basic technical analysis, just where is it? Where is the support? Where is the resistance? Where is the accumulation? These are the most important areas to, to base in your actions on. Uh, I love, uh, you know, I've been in a while to have, uh, um, I've been able to recognize particular triggers. I've showed you one today. There's a couple more similar to that one that I really want you to have that, um, that, that go with this moving average and other moving averages. But I think the combination of, uh, you know, a, a flow and then reversal with, uh, with, the, with the proper trigger. If you can have a, tr listen, <laughs> There's an old expression that said, I'd rather be out of a trade wishing I was in than in a trade wishing I was out. And uh, there's probably no true words that have been said. But on the other hand, as a trader, I want the action. I want to be in, I want to be in a trade that I believe has potential based on uh, you know, solid technical analysis. And the trigger is, I have two requirements for a trigger. One is that it's a trigger that offers me a uh, a reasonable uh, place to put my stop, a, an exact place, but reasonable as far as amount is concerned to my trading. In other words, not every trading size can take every trigger because you, uh, you, you have to be able to stand the risk. You don't want to take any more than a couple of percentage uh, of, of equity in any particular trade or even less if you can. So uh, that's one requirement of a decent trigger. The second is that it's, it, it, has a very high probability over two thirds or more, if you can, two thirds or more um, of, of advancing in the direction that you've chosen initially. And, and when I do that, and, and when you can do that, you can take a quick scalp on, on part of the approach and then let the other ride. And any trading plan, I mentioned that I've written books on trading plan, any ones that I've written literally in the last five or six years, always have you're always initiating at least two positions two or in, in, in a stock trade if you're trading a, if you if you're day trading 100 shares you're treating it as 50 50 you're always taking the scalp in my triggers because those are very high probability happenings and then whether it continues or not is based on other th uh, the, the continuation of the technical um, formations that, that are happening. And so, and you manage that on the way up with a proper trailing stop in, in a couple of different ways. So a trigger has to give me that pop, okay? Um, on a very, on a nice percentage basis, at least a two thirds. So there's a lot of, a lot of reasons why I want a trace. This trigger right here, for instance, uh, would that get you short? That's pretty long trigger. But as the market backed up, uh, that could have shortened your risk and you may, may have been in this trade. In any event, let's let's look at uh, PL, PLUG. I hope I'm not over talking here. Okay. So go to the disciplinetrader.com and uh, and opt in for my four minute drill for traders and, and um, you'll get on my list and see. All right, this is Plug Power. Never heard of this company. Plug Power. All right. Um, and you can see well, where my triggers are leading. Here's a, here's a pr perfect example. Here's a trigger that didn't work, but here's one that worked. You had a, you got the, a nice scalp and then it went sideways enough for you to actually get out out here. All right, um, but as far as this is concerned, uh, this, this stock is a problem. I mean, this is a real problem. Um, I, I would not be long this stock. I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't be looking to get long in this stock. Uh, and here's some of the here's here's the main reason. Um, you've got a, a bottom that happened here that was a very well established bottom. Even tried to con to to recall that establishment right here. Even resisted any downside in this area. Um, looking back at history, but the fact that you breached it and you've had uh, feeble rallies going into it. If I look at the bodies here, very very small. Uh, I would expect another body on the short side with, with some kind of uh, um, length. Th this is uh, this is a stock that is having real problems. I, I don't know what to say other than I mean, you look at this stock and you say, "Gosh, this looks like um, uh, this looks like it'd be great to look for a for a, a long position." But there's nothing here telling me. I mean, the momentum continues lower. Um, even when it had a chance down here to 
to rally. See, we got to the point where uh, where um, even a southerly movement right here would, would look to hold, and it did here, but not much of a movement higher, uh, followed by uh, new lows and so on. Yeah, uh, you know, in fact, I, I may even look to get out of the stock and look for uh, better places to put my money. I, I hate to tell you that. Uh, hopefully you're, you're not too long in this stock uh, because this this stock, this is the kind, I don't know what plug does, but uh, I look at this and they, you, know, you look at this and it looks like a stock uh, uh, that may never come back. I don't know. <laughs> T-L-R-Y, let's see what this looks like. Uh, maybe this will have a better story for you. Uh, Tilray Brands. Um, I can tell that whoever you are, Steve, you may be uh, looking for uh, stocks that are maybe about to rebound. We've only got a few minutes. So I'll, I'll just give you my general uh, my my general thought here is that we are also going lower. Um, you can see the trigger here that led to this nice movement here uh, on the short side. But uh, again, we're not. You know the fact that we we've, we've broken down um, each each low and and we're even though the momentum uh, has come up a bit, we're not seeing much as far as the price action is. I got to see a lot more to go low, to, to go long this stock, uh, you know, and, and I think the smart money is probably short this stock. Let's look at, um, let's look at one more. I'll take uh, three, six, one, nine, four, twos, uh, whatever, PG. I think, we, did we look at Procter & Gamble yet? That's just Procter & Gamble, right? Yeah, Procter & Gamble. Uh, yeah. Uh, ah, let's see. You know, we're, th this is a lot. You can see there's a lot of interest in this area, where which means when I say that, I mean that when the stock goes above that area, it tend to come down and test this area. I mean, what this means is there are a lot of people long and a lot of people short, and they'll defend their positions in here. When you see a breakout like this, who likely will defend this. And you'll see uh, in, right in this area, you'll, you'll see support. So if I were somebody looking to trade this, uh, again, we're, we're starting to go sideways. We're accumulating from this. Look at this. This is our, look at this trigger here. I'll tell you, if you, if you really go to simpletradingplans.com and take a look at Loaded Gun, because there's a lot to say about not only the trigger, but the exit strategies, which are just as cool as this. Here's another trigger on the short side. Um, but for, for right now, this is a trigger on the short side. Uh, it's not a strong trigger uh, because we have opposing tails. See these opposing tails? This looks like a, this is a hanging man at the end of a short run. Uh, this may be a shooting star that's uh, kind of bastardized, but um, there's nothing to do here yet. Uh, I, would, I, I would be looking probably for just a touch more downside and then a look, a, a, a shot to go longer. I, I think that this year, if we get, get past the first and second quarter, uh, I think you'll start to see some really nice movements on the, on the north side of some of these stocks, certainly the stocks like PG&E. So um, I would be looking, I would hold my water on this until I, uh, I, I saw some definite uh, technical reason to go long. Um, right now, it looks like it's going sideways to, to fade. Uh, in, back into this area of about 145. So nothing much to do there. Um, I think we are out of time. I'm, I'm just going to throw up Tesla real fast, ESLA. And um, uh, Tesla is a sell. Uh, <laughs> Tesla is a sell. And, um, you know, I, I, I don't think it's done going down. There's a lot of reasons for that. Uh, there's a lot of reasons this chart is saying for that. But when you see when you see these kinds of small bodies uh, on one side of an eight bar exponential moving average with no breaches along the way, this thing's got some time uh, to, uh, and, and you're, you're seeing a consistent uh, low ebb on the, um, uh, on um, the momentum. All right. Well, that's it, Dave. I'm, I'm, I hope you enjoyed this uh, basic way of looking at things with an important trigger. Hopefully I, I gave you an idea of how to use it, but please don't go using it on every trade until you, uh, talk to me a little bit more about the exit strategy. Uh, so I appreciate being with you. I, I really, uh, um, I, I, I want to stress about Aqua, AQUA. If you can get that in the mid 30s, I'd be looking at that uh, for the very, very long term. Because again, I think water is where, uh, where it's going to be at in the, in the next decade.